welcome to our 36th episode of the world of running i'm your host aditi pandya most of us have heard about the tarahumara indian mexico's deadly cooper canyons these legendary endurance runners are famously chronicled in the book born to run they run for miles on barefoot enjoying the sun storm and the treacherous terrain Personally I have the luxury of cushioned shoes especially those with an extra bounce for a good tempo now the carbon shoes for races however barefoot running is not unheard and i have a lot of friends and acquaintances who enjoy barefoot running before we go any further in today's episode i have a request for all our listeners if you like our podcast please do subscribe to it and also share with other fellow runners who are yet to discover us if you have liked a particular episode share your recording of the favorite episode and we will play it in our next podcast share a 30 second audio message example i like the marathon training episode or the beginner's guide to running episode as it helped me to improve or structure my training you can share this audio message at connect at geeksonfeet.com in this episode we explore barefoot running in detail what it takes to run barefoot why should anyone want to explore barefoot running what are the positives and its challenges for this our guest for today is thomas bobby philip bobby is known in the running circles as barefoot bobby Bobby realized his passion towards running in 2009 through years of disciplined training he has been a podium finisher across multiple races that is 10k's half marathons and marathon events in India Bobby transitioned to barefoot running in the April of 2012 and ever since he's never looked back he is qualified for the Boston Marathon in 2014 and was the first Indian to have run barefoot at the Boston Marathon event with the support of experienced barefoot runners he actively promotes barefoot running in Bangalore and other cities the community of barefoot runners are growing across the country with the benefits they see in it bobby ran his first sub 3 marathon at the mumbai marathon in 2017 and later he has ran six marathon at a sub 3 hour His personal best for 10k is 36 minutes. His half marathon time is 1 hour and 18 minutes and his marathon time is 2 hours and 55 minutes. Hi Bobby, how are you and welcome to today's episode. Thank you Aditi and thanks for the introduction. Looking forward for the discussion. So Bobby, I've seen you running at mul- in multiple seasons whether it is rain or whether it is cold or stormy and i know the way you when when sometimes we happen to run near hl your poise and candor is the same no matter what season it is and whether you like it or not you have been the mascot of barefoot running in india and you've inspired a lot of people to take up barefoot running right so um So how did you uh, you know how do you define barefoot running bobby and uh, minimalist running and uh, how are they different from short running Yeah i mean uh, barefoot running is basically ensuring that we run in the most natural format basically which means that uh, you know there is nothing to protect our feet so we let our feet experience it either by not wearing any footwear or we wear a footwear which has got a very minimalistic uh, thickness of sole uh, which in fact actually makes you you know actually feel everything so that the the sole is just as a level of protection or layer of protection to ensure that uh, you, you know you still feel uh, every pebble everything on the on the on the uh, streets uh, and uh, you also let the foot the foot or the sole of the feet you know correspond back to the entire body or communicate back to the body uh, so you know not wearing anything is the most natural format uh, but now uh, since barefoot is is also getting commercialized 
almost every footwear company offers you a minimalistic shoe. Uh, and there, there, yeah. there are specific footwears who, who offer you, you know, uh, like Zero and uh, uh, Earth Runners. So they, they offer uh, pure minimalistic shoes. Yeah. So Bobby, um, as uh, I mentioned in your intro, that you started as a short runner and then moved to barefoot running after three years. So what was your reason to shift to barefoot running? And uh, um, why do you see people generally moving to barefoot running in general? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. So from my point of view, the reason, I mean, one is it's accidental. It was never a plan that I wanted to transition to barefoot. Just that uh, once I went in, uh, just did a barefoot walk and a small run. Uh, and a couple of runs after that and next day onwards whenever I would run with the shoes I could actually feel that I was carrying a weight on my feet you know so it was so easily for you know so easy for me to recognize that you know that I'm putting on an additional weight on my feet and it is making it difficult not I mean it's not a convenient experience for me so I naturally had a liking uh, you know uh, that uh, not carrying any weight was was the primary reason uh, the other one was i could also experience freedom on my feet you know it was like so natural uh, you know it's like a kid going and playing uh, uh, you know letting my feet breathe and feel good about it so that was the second reason uh, so these were actually the primary reasons and then and this concept was very new to me so I hardly knew any barefoot runner those days. You know, there was literally no one internationally. Also, there was there wasn't many that I could consult or inquire on. What is this? Is am I doing it correct? Uh, you know, what should be what should be the process to transition? There are a lot of these questions, but it, uh, but for me it came reasonably natural, and I was quite competitive also. Uh, I remember in the year 2012 when I when I transitioned. I was also a competitive runner, so among uh, I was among the you know uh, sort of a very fast athlete even in those days. So I had to be extremely careful to ensure that I take the correct step and I don't fall back. You know, I did not want to be slower. I wanted to uh, you know ensure that I continue to be a faster runner uh, even when I'm barefoot. So yeah. So, uh, so it's been um, uh, more than a decade that you've been running barefoot, right? And, uh, you know, so I want to ask, what are the benefits that you saw uh, in barefoot running? And why should a person consider to take up barefoot running? Yeah, I mean, there are pros and cons. So it's not just benefits. So there are pros and cons of being barefoot. For sure, there are more of benefits, at least personally, what I feel and I know. So one basic thing is, you know, the entire universe is barefoot. You know, that has to be understood. Uh, the entire universe and it's just in the humans, we have been brainwashed by the shoot uh, companies uh, saying that, uh, you know, your, your strata in the society, your position, uh, is decided by the kind of shoes, footwear you wear. Uh, also, you are protected, uh, and now it has gone to such an extent that shoes itself has got such magical technology within it that it itself gives you the power to, to propelling power to move forward. So, shoes itself, the technology in that itself has become so strong. Uh, so, so the advantages is that uh, you know you're doing it the most natural method. We were we none of the humans are born with shoes, so God has never made us to run with shoes or be with shoes. Uh, so the, we are supposed to be barefoot. That's how God has made us. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, the 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 current environment is that as soon as you start walking, you know, parents give you uh, a layer of protection to ensure that your feet is well protected. Uh, now, if we go go to this natural method, uh, there are loads of benefits. Most important is the concept of pro uh, proprioception. Uh, I mean, basically ensuring that uh, you know the 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 nerve endings of your feet, of the sole of your feet, communicates to the entire body. So there's a whole lot of communication happening from the sole to to the entire body. It's like even also as you hear of acupuncture, it's the same concept, right? 
you know there is it's a healing power which uh, which the soul of the soul of a fit gives to the entire body similarly there's a whole lot of communication which happens uh, you know key things like a shoot runner with the kind of thick soles uh, and cushioned soles uh, and heel that you wear you lose the entire communication so so my point of you know my concept is that once a feet is inside a shoe it's like a dead element lying inside there is absolutely no no thinking power there is absolutely no life for the feet uh, and it's just your calves and your uh, quads which is moving your foot forward and uh, you know the feet actually inside the shoes has got no life in it uh, so you, you have that the entire channel of communication is lost uh, once you are with the shoes um, second one is uh, it needs to breathe yeah your feet needs to breathe inside the sole uh, uh, you know it has uh, again it is uh, and in the socks that you you, you know that you sweat uh, and you know th that's a place where there could be odor uh, you know it, it it is it's humid inside uh, and and the feet loses its freedom so again that is there again uh, next point is the the communication we are blocking the entire communication channel so which basically means that you do not know where your foot is landing uh, and how it goes forward being barefoot also ensures that with the communication you, your feet you know there's uh, the feet decides how how your next step should be you know how much should it move forward it 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 said that you know you would reduce your stride length uh, by default when you are barefoot uh, because it knows what is correct you would most naturally most often you would land uh, midfoot or forefoot there's a higher possibility of landing in the correct method so yeah these are some of the very elementary basic advantages of being barefoot uh, i also say uh, because everyone says that how can you ever be barefoot you know so i say the the biggest hurdle is more in the mind than in the physical reality because in the mind it's always that there are so many stones and glass pieces and nails and everything on the on the streets how could you ever be barefoot uh, and how could you ever so when i start my run almost every time i run when i start my run uh, it's usually around 5:30 or just you know a minute or two around 5:30 uh there is nothing visible on the streets i just you know i'm almost like blindfolded i'm just going further with the blind faith that you know i'm not stepping on some glass pieces of broken bottles but believe me it's now over 11 years uh, that i've been running never even once have i had a cut i mean i've had small, you know minute pieces uh, going in my feet which i go to a physician and get it cleaned Uh, or someone at home, uh, if they can see it, they would clean it. Uh, and, but I mean, by the grace of God, till now I have never had a major cut. You know, so it's been. Uh, I mean, it's been fine, and uh, yeah, uh, it's given me a lot of benefits. So, so um, yeah, I, I think um, you've been lucky, and as you said, by the grace of God, nothing has happened. And I'm glad that we see you running every morning. and uh, i so we just heard about the transitioning of yours to barefoot we also heard about um the advantages and benefits of barefoot now uh, now bobby for those who are currently using cushion shoes and would like to move barefoot move to barefoot running uh, what is the best way to transition right so i'm trying to understand here that uh, in terms of mileage or or yeah. what should be the surface they should start on right like yeah. grass or concrete or beach yeah you know there's yeah. no one correct method because i've talked to lots of people and you know people have done really very very strange methods but the, i mean i would the most natural method to transition i would say is you need to graduate from you know by running by running walking 1 2 kilometers to progress to 3 5 7 so your feet the sole of your feet needs to get used to being barefoot so over time uh, the sole naturally has its process of uh, of of uh, of uh, you know getting adjusted to the to the tarmac roads or to the concrete roads or to whatever sort of a surface you are running on the sole of your feet naturally gets adapted to it uh, and you need to give it time 
so uh, you know some of them love it so much that they you know they all of a sudden they start running 10 15 20 it's not just the sole of the feet it's also uh, it's also it's not just the sole uh, but it's also uh, the the entire body yeah for example your calves uh, they are one, they are pampered with uh, they are pampered with the shoes uh, now when you go barefoot they lose the trans they, they they lose that pampering effect so the calf is gets the most impacted next is the quads uh, you will find that the quads get uh, you know uh, gets tight so uh, so that also there's an impact uh, then there is uh, there's a concept of top of the shoe uh, the top of your feet you know there's a pain which happens over there so you know so the, the entire feet area uh, struggles struggles a lot uh, so, so you you need to give time for the body to adapt to those new uh, you know new challenges. So uh, you should you should take your own time for the transition. That's one. Second thing is you know you need to find a place which will which you are sure uh, you know will be good, uh, which you are sure will be uh, will be uh, you know will not be so difficult for you to run. So, like for example, in Bangalore, I know Kaban Park has got a very nice, clean road, uh, and you can run there very comfortably. So, whenever I I promote, I do organize this barefoot promo runs, I do it in Kaban Park so that it becomes easier. Uh, you know, so you need to find find some good places and uh, do not overdo it. You know, that is very important. Not overdoing it. So. So these are basic things you need to ensure. Uh, then the other part is uh, keep your feet clean and dry always. Uh, that is really important. Uh, you know, uh, so even in case you have a small blister, which could be the possibility, especially in the initial six months, you could have blisters coming in. Um, so you need to just keep it clean or visit a physician and get it cleaned. Uh, and and dry so so these are some of the basic things you would do to transition to barefoot but again you know when we say transition i really want to be clear that it's not that you should be a permanently a barefoot runner it's just that at least you know once a week once a fortnight you just go out uh, and run barefoot yeah it's just so that your body gets used to it uh, so you should be able to transition between shoes, uh, minimalistics, or being a pure barefoot runner. Many of them, after they finish their workout, they do two or three kilometers running barefoot. You know, that's brilliant. That's really the best. Yeah, so I, I have known a uh, few runners who do, do a cool down post run barefoot. Right, just to be in touch with the natural form of running. And uh, now, uh, Bobby, you have been somebody who is lucky not to get injured, but there can be ways that barefoot runners may get injured, right? Depending upon, as you mentioned, that you start around 5.30 in the morning. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a challenging question to answer. Uh, you know, depending on the type, so, see, injuries... Can we, uh, we need to be very clear what is the cause of the injury you know is is it because of running is it because of running or the, uh, you know excessive running strengthening or is it because of uh, barefoot it's, it's, is it because of ba being barefoot uh, so if it is specific to because of being barefoot because for example your calves could be tight your quads could be tight we need to focus on uh, for sure, like for example, when you start, uh, you know, it will tighten up your uh, your calves and your quads. So you need to do specific workouts which will strengthen up, which will strengthen up your uh, calves, um, uh, and also, you know, like for example, foam rolling will need to be a must because you know after every run you will feel that you know your uh, your calves are tight, uh, your quads are getting tight, so you need to foam roll. Uh, yeah, so these are new things that you need to introduce in your workouts over and above the regular strengthening activities that has been done. Um, so, yeah, so uh, barefoot specific, I mean, I cannot think of anything else. So it's more uh, ensuring that, uh, you know, you focus, focus on those specific muscles uh, which gets impacted by being barefoot. 
Understood. So Bobby, I also remember once uh, we met while running and, and um, you had inquired about road conditions in a particular area. So uh, what are the things barefoot runners should keep in mind when they are running on road, especially under Indian conditions, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, Indian conditions, I would actually say that Indian con- Indian street roads are much better than the ones you would find internationally uh, because Indian tar- the quality of Indian tarmac is usually very smooth, uh, you know, very smooth. Uh, uh, you wouldn't see a lot of uh, you know stones unlike in 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 european countries or in countries where there's snow uh, they are never that smooth because uh, vehicular uh, uh, they they uh, uh, you know they cre- they put in those stones to ensure that it, the roads are not very smooth uh, so that way indian roads are much better but again doesn't mean that every every road over here is good uh, there are many places uh, which will not give you that smooth tarmac so yeah so you know our feet needs to get one is our feet needs to get adjusted to those rough surfaces so that is one activity uh, second one is uh, you you you, have, uh, you know you you run over it quite often uh, quite often uh, that the sole of your feet, you know, gets used to, uh, to those surfaces. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, these are the only only things that you would do. Um, the other thing is a good minimalistic shoes would also help you a bit. Uh, but again, there isn't much that a minimalistic shoe can do. You know, it just gives you a layer, small layer of protection from, you know, from any small cut or anything that could happen, potentially happen. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, patiently take time uh, and uh, and let the feet get used to it. So, Bobby, what are some of the misconceptions around barefoot running? Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, misconceptions, uh, I mean, there are lots. Like, most elementary important thing is, uh, is that, uh, you know, the road is filled with filled with uh, pebbles and uh, uh, glasses and nails that for sure is a misconception because it's it is not i mean i would recommend everyone to just be out on the streets you now just do it once at least a kilometer uh, uh, at least a kilometer you know just have a walk uh, and you will realize that that's not the case uh, then the other thing is like uh, your feet being barefoot will be very dirty. Uh, it will be, uh, you know, uh, your, the shape of your feet would get spoiled. I mean, that for sure is a misconception. In fact, I feel, uh, you know, I clean my feet much more than anyone else I know of. You know, I, I keep cleaning my feet at least four or five times in a day. For sure, every day and night before sleeping, my feet is always clean. Being barefoot, I believe that, you know, my foot has to be you know has to be very well taken care of uh, and i always keep it clean even when i walk within the house even if there's a slight dirt on my feet i know when there's dirt and i would always go and keep it clean if you're wearing a footwear and walking the house you will never ever realize any dirt uh, happening on your feet or even on your footwear so you're actually messing around with the house so uh, yeah and also then some say that uh, you know yeah basically more about cleanliness point of view uh, so you know, you need to keep your feet clean uh, i mean otherwise uh, nothing spe- uh, nothing otherwise uh, any additional step required uh, this this should be good understood so um so Bobby, also because uh, once you start running barefoot, we need to um, strengthen certain muscles, right? So be it our foot muscles or ankle joints. So uh, what do you specifically do to strengthen during training, right? Like, is it like you take care of certain certain specificity because you are running barefoot for strength yeah uh, so calf and quads are the biggest area that we need to focus because of the transition to barefoot uh, so i do very specific uh, very specific stretching foam rolling and strengthening on those two areas uh, which is the calves and the quads uh, knees many people say uh, gets impacted a lot because you lose the the 
the pampering of the, by the shoes so knees could get impacted but i would always argue on that uh, god has given us uh, a very natural uh, spring effect uh, on the knees uh, around the knees so the muscles uh, you know we we have a natural spring effect happening over there um, and uh, you know so it doesn't actually have a major impact on the knee by being barefoot uh, we we make use of the of the natural spring effect uh, so yeah otherwise there is nothing specific that you need to do uh, because of being barefoot understood so uh, so other thing i have uh, in mind bobby is about recovery right post a long run or a speed training session so uh, can you talk about how do you recover so do you soak your feet as you mentioned that you keep cleaning your feet or foot massage or wear socks at home and if you can just throw some light around it yeah i mean recovery for sure is critical uh, because again the i mean literally even today even after 10 years of running being barefoot uh, it still does have an impact on my calves i know that after every race a major race which would which would be more in terms of full marathon races uh, i feel uh, there is still an impact on my calves uh, so it needs we need to give it its time to recover yeah so there is there is no major magical things we, we you need to do quite a quite a lot more of foam rolling quite a lot more of uh, stretching and mobility workouts uh, uh, on more on the feet area i would say uh, so these are the things basically that you need to ensure you include uh, we need it needs more recovery time for sure uh, and we need to be a bit patient in giving the required recovery time so top top strengthening top strengthening stretching foam rolling these are things that you need to ensure you include in your workouts understood understood so uh, so bobby one of the things i also know about you is that you are interested in running form and you are you are like a big proponent of chi running right so uh, how do you see barefoot running improving running form right whether it is cadence or better stride and things like that yeah i mean uh, chi running also uh, uh, you know basic thing is about natural format of running is uh, is about, is about chi running uh, uh, yeah there is nothing there is no unnatural concept uh, which we introduce as part of chi running so it's basically understanding the very elementary basics of uh, of body movements and that's what we put in running um so again you know focusing focusing on the very natural format how we move forward how we how we use our arms how we use our feet how we use the core of our body you know uh, how do the ent- how how we use a very natural form of the entire body moving forward is what we focus in uh, chi running and the same is what we look forward to barefoot running so ensuring that there is a, a, a standard cadence and that that we maintain so approximately around 180 uh, anywhere between 175 to 180 steps per minute uh, moving forward as rhythmic as natural uh, as possible so barefoot running in fact helps a lot uh, in enforcing those standards uh, or those principles uh, that chi running promotes great so bobby we've almost come to our last section of of the podcast and uh, i'm going to ask you some of your memories right so um so uh, one of the uh, one of the things i want to ask you is which is one of your most memorable experience running a marathon barefoot yeah for sure the most memorable uh, barefoot ever run was the boston marathon uh, you know there was lot of curiosity on uh, me running barefoot starting from uh catching a bus from this uh from i'm not sure if, uh, was it the city yeah from the city till the start line in the bus almost every one had questions about why barefoot was i always a barefoot runner and especially being from india they would think that did you never do you never run with shoes on uh you know those were the questions and then also in the holding area 
so many people i was surprised how come so many people are inquiring uh, everything about uh, barefoot running uh, and and i wasn't even wearing a minimalistic right i mean it was just pure barefoot in the very cold weather over there it was almost 5 degrees uh, in the morning over there uh, and then uh, even in the start line when i'm standing over there uh, at that time when i was in the start line i was wearing socks because it was raining uh, uh, it was raining at the start i was in my jacket uh, even with my socks also people noticed that uh, i wasn't wearing a shoes lot of questions and then through the run so many people inquired and then at the finish line you know uh, it was really cold you know it's, it, when we started it was almost 5 degree we sta- i started my run at around 11 and i finished my run at around 2:30 uh, even at 2:30 in the afternoon it was 7 degrees uh, celsius and Uh, at the finish line there was a journalist who wanted to take my interview uh, only because i was i was a barefoot runner she came to know that there's a barefoot runner who is crossing the finish line uh, so she was very eager to ask me questions i was feeling too cold over there you know i was shivering shivering to the extent that uh, after literally actually after 42 kilometers you would think that you know the body is hot and uh, you know you're sweated it out over there it was exactly the opposite i was i had my body was very weak uh, and and i was literally shivering i couldn't utter a single word over there so when the journalist even asked me my name i couldn't you know literally i was shivering i couldn't answer it so luckily i had two of my friends over there besides me they answered on my behalf uh, the questions uh, and that interview was literally on the headlines in the boston news over there and for the next two weeks i was so popular all across the world you know so many calls so many interviews it was insane i mean i have never ever experienced that in my life so the most that would be for sure my most memorable barefoot experience great great so it was it, you you truly deserved it bobby that back then right and um So Bobby I have one more question and that's related to the Indian circuit right so according to you which is the best suited barefoot marathon in the Indian circuit and which is the one people may want to avoid now that you've ran multiple Yeah multiple I mean uh, may want to avoid that I, it was easy for me to answer that was uh, the Ahmedabad marathon uh, you know the route over there was really extremely challenging but uh, now i understand that they've changed the route so i have not run in the new route uh, otherwise uh, i mean i wouldn't say there is any uh, any other place where you should avoid it's basically you one being a barefooter one has to train to adapt to the different uh, you know situations Uh, i mean when i i ran uh, boston which uh, boston new york i mean all these routes then the route is never easy because they this the, you know that the quality of tarmac is like there are a lot of stones uh, on the top of the tarmac so uh, so when you run you can actually feel those stones in your feet so you know you it's just that i got adapted to it and i could somehow manage it it wasn't at all convenient but i could i could manage that uh, or i could tolerate that pain that level of pain um, so one needs to get used adapt uh, adapted to it or get used to it uh, uh, th- those sort of surfaces uh, which is the best in in terms i mean there are quite a lot of them uh, hyderabad i liked chennai i liked mumbai is also good but there are certain sections which would be a bit challenging there are certain sections uh, other mumbai uh, tata mumbai marathon also offers uh, reasonably a good route uh, delhi is also good i mean yeah i mean a lot of these uh, in the in the city a lot of these routes offer reasonably good quality of tarmac so bobby i have one more question for you and that is um, for those who are curious to try uh, barefoot running for the first time uh what is your what is your one advice to them i mean uh, as i mentioned previously uh, barefoot running it's bigger a mental hurdle than a physical hurdle so mentally itself we need to be very clear that uh, our roads are not filled with glasses or nails or you know uh, uh, pebbles or anything like that so they are reasonably clean uh, so you one needs to patiently uh, you know handle this you need to find out a route which is clean uh, 
try out one kilometer, talk to a friend who is another barefooter, uh, see, uh, hear from them what could be a, you know, possibly a good route uh, to, to experience being barefoot. Uh, and we also mentally prepared that if there are small minor cuts, don't get uh, worried about it, don't get hassled, you know, just keep it clean, visit a physician and, you know, uh, get it, uh, and not necessarily a physician, I would say, you know, you get home, uh, you know, a small Dettol uh, cleaning should be good. Uh, yeah, that's all. It's really, I mean, it's it's being patient also, uh, because, you, you know, unlike a shoe runner where you're pampered with a lot of things, being barefoot, it's a new experience. So you need to be mentally prepared for some unexpected things uh, that could happen. Uh, but it, it is not something you know very drastic that could have a major impact on your running uh, history understood so bobby thank you for um, joining us today for this episode and i wish you all the best for your coming season and uh, happy running thank you and thanks for uh, you know taking up this topic uh, really good not uh, the biggest challenge a barefoot runner uh, faces is that no commercial entity would ever promote barefoot so it's just these small things you know which we, we barefoot runners take some actions you know to promote barefoot running so that's the only method we we can promote this uh, yeah so thanks for you know taking this initiative and helping us promote this thank you I would like to thank all our listeners and if you like this episode and would like to know more on the world of running, please subscribe to our channel and if you know of someone who is starting their journey into fitness and running, do share our podcast link with them. I would like to thank my friend Arvind for editing, sound recording and taking care of the post-production for this podcast. If you have any suggestions on improving the content of the show, or topics you would like us to cover, please share it by emailing us at connect at geeksonfeet.com or you can also reach us through Twitter, Facebook or Instagram.